Okay, so we're back at the river. It's the Ooh. first day of spring. Yeah. The sky is blue, the birds are singing, and we're going to find some treasures. We are. We, we feel it in our waters today, guys. We're going to find <laughs> some good stuff. So uh, let's do it. <laughs> first find can you see it it's hiding down here it's a pipe bowl with a beautiful heart on it it's a TW tenants heart pipe and down here looks like my second find is clay pipe number two it has a heart on it but it's not a tenant pipe it's something else. I'm not sure what that says. Um, something? I'm not sure if we've found one of these before or not. That looks like a huge bit of lead. Yeah, look. Huge chunk of lead. Might take that with me. Okay, so my first find, well, my first whole one, I keep finding a lot of broken things. Um, is this little bottle and I was convinced this was just the top of a broken bottle but it's actually a tiny little bottle look at that oh my goodness wait a minute it's one of those gold Sheba bottles oh my goodness <laughs> it's got the gold in it the Sheba gold Queen of Sheba gold. Well, would you look at that? Mum's found a Queen Sheba gold. If you remember, we found one of these bottles before, like a, quite a few months ago now, didn't we? Yeah, it's a different shape though. Yeah, it's a completely different shape, look. It's like a square shape and it's smaller and it's still got the paint in it as well, look. And the cork. And the cork, that's so cool. <laughs> This is the second Queen Sheba liquid gold bottle we've found. The first one was found by Alex and is a different shape and possibly later in date to this one. But both bottles still retain some of the gold contents. Perhaps this is due to the user not adhering to rule number two in the directions which states, each time the brush is dipped in, before taking it out, stir well. If this is not done, the liquid only will be used and the gold is left at the bottom. Queen Sheba Liquid Gold was made in Stockport by T. Coppock & Co. Thomas Coppock Sr. was born in Manchester, England in 1840. At the time of his marriage in 1860, Thomas was a chemist, but by 1871 was a commercial traveller in paper wall hangings, or wallpaper as it is now known. Sometime between 1891 and 1901, he became a paint manufacturer. Perhaps former skills as a chemist and inspiration from the products he was selling prompted the career change. By 1891, Thomas's son, also named Thomas, joined the business of Copper & Co. as a clerk, and by 1901 was manager of the works. In 1894, Thomas Jr. applied for a patent for his improved varnish applicable to mixing with bronze powder colours and for decorative painting purposes. This became Queen Sheba Liquid Gold, which was first advertised for sale from that date. This product proved to be liquid gold indeed. Thomas Jr. lived to the ripe old age of 82 and on his death in 1947, he left a fortune of what would today be almost one million pounds. It's a little clay marble. Something here. I think it's a, it's a little button. That's the shank on the back. Mother of Pearl, quite a thick one. This water is freezing cold. 
that is a bit of writing slate but I'm gonna leave it here there's so much of it here pretty bit of sponge red down here I'm gonna have to plunge my hand in oh god that's very cold look oh isn't that pretty that's a beautiful little saucer of some kind broken obviously I'll take that look at that I've never seen that marmalade brand before oh no I'll have to go in again oh that's quite a nice it's quite a nice um print on there look at that silver pan preserves not seen one of those before that's interesting don't think I'll take it but I might look that up might be a little bit more information about that somewhere else found a bottle here that we have found before in the past sorry if it's a bit noisy in the background it says made in Germany and it's AJ White I can't remember what's on the other side but yeah there was a really interesting it's a quack medicine there's a really interesting story about this this bottle actually so if you're interested we'll link the video down below oh I think this is what I think it is I don't think it's whole but oh look it's a doll's head she's missing her shoulders though unfortunately but still who doesn't love finding doll parts I do I, we both do we love them that's a great little find. There's something here, can you see it? It's quite well camouflaged, but it's the outline of it that's intriguing me. Look at that. It's a leaf shape clay thing, like a tile. Oh, I really like that, I'm gonna take that. And you might recognise this, it's just peeping out. Is it whole? Yes it is. Hmm. It's cute. So um, I was scraping the bank and this just fell out. Yeah. And it's an OXO bottle but I've never seen one like that. Two ounce OXO? Yeah. That's really strange. That Amber is an colour. odd one. I've never seen one like that no, before. No, I haven't. wonder if it's rare. Who knows, but I see some more bottles. Look, oh. there's one there. Okay. One there and one base of one here. Oh, what's that? Oh, nothing. <laughs> okay, what's this one then? I don't think it's anything. No. No writing on that one. There is. Mason's extract. That was broken one. Mason's extract. Oh, it is. It's Mason's extract. But we've got loads of those. So. so we'll leave it up here for someone else. Okay, so I did. I scraped, and something's appeared. Let's. Oh, it's a horse. Oh no! I don't think it's a horse. I think it's a sheep. Look at the ear. Oh, I think we found a little sheep's head. Oh. That's cute. Not never found a sheep's head before. Oh, and I've literally just spotted something else here. Look, it's a nice big stone marble, clay marble. Actually, it does actually feel like stone. Some of them are actually made of stone. So I think I might do a bit of scraping. Just some light scraping at the edge here just move some of these larger stones because the treasures could very well be hiding underneath ah look there's another one for the collection it's another little morning button this one looks nice look at that there another little french jet button it's got like a little like foliage design some leaves like a chevron that's pretty Every design you find on these little buttons is different, which, what's, which is what makes them so joyful, little joyful little finds. 
French jet buttons are so named because they were mostly produced in France made from black glass to imitate the more expensive Whitby Jet gemstone made popular by Queen Victoria. This is our collection of our smallest French jet buttons. Most of these buttons were made having been pressed in a mould, cut and polished all by hand. Look at the size of this bead I've just found. We're just absolute pros at finding these minuscule beads for some reason. <laughs> Unfortunately, I lost the sound right about here, but down here it looks as if I found something heart-shaped and it turns out to be this beautiful glass cabochon. I think it's pressed glass. I'm not sure what it would have been exactly, but probably part of some kind of jewellery. But what a lovely little find, we can actually use this and make a bezel for it and make it into some kind of new piece of jewellery, so that's really cool. I've also found a handful of a few bits and bobs here, um, including this beautiful yet quite knackered German marble. And this is a beautiful like onion skin German marble as well. Um, and a cod marble and a few other things but over here mum's also found a piece of knackered German marble and unfortunately a broken doll's leg. I think I can see a pipe bowl under here. Yes it is. Oh, it's a heart pipe. TW. So I literally just saw this round circle, <laughs> round circle obviously, and I excavated it and look, it's quite clearly a clay pipe. Does it have anything on it? That's the question. Yes it does, it has a heart on it. <laughs> Amazing how I spot that just from like, just that. I've got these trained eyes train mudlarking eyes. Now I bet there's so many treasures in this bank side waiting, just waiting to be roaded out by the next flood. Another pipe bowl hiding. Another plain one. First day of spring and the birds really are singing. So beautiful. finds down here, a lovely green bottle stop, this is some sort of ceram ceramic uh, reel of some sort, and the top half of an egg cup which I can use to make things with, so cool. Looks like a cog of some sort. Could this be a whole little perfume bottle? I think it is. I think that's just a crease rather than a crack. So yeah, how cute, I love them. It's a bead! Beautiful, oh look at that, especially in the sunshine. Wow, beautiful blue bead. Yep, so lost the sound again, but down here I spot a few interesting things. This looks like some kind of weird bead. Um, and it is, I think it is some kind of moon-shaped pressed glass red bead of some kind. I've not seen a bead like this actually, it's really unusual. How cool is that? And the other thing down here is a swan's head, and we always find these. Swan ornaments seem to have been quite popular actually. Okay, so in this vicinity 
I've just bought two beads, not one but two. So the first one I bought is here. It looks like quite a bright little blue bead, like a turquoise blue. And then this one down here. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Beautiful, two beautiful beads. Pipe bowl here. I think it's plain. Yeah, I think that's just a, a ding. So I just found this little tack and then I saw this and I think it's the end of a pipe. A mouthpiece for a pipe. A more modern pipe, of course. It's probably Bakelite. Looks like a coin down here. Oh, I think it's an old penny. It's very crusty. But, um, might be able to clean it enough to see what it is. I think I might have found a tiny bead here. Oh, I've missed it. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's so small I couldn't pick it up. There it is, look. Lovely little green bead. Nice little bit of copper scrap here. And I think I can see something hiding under here and it's a button. Well, that's a nice button. All right, so I've just found a little tiny button here. Looks like Mother of Pearl. And Alex I has spotted something over here. It's a little bead. It is, it's oh, a bead. It's another red little bead. little red bead. That's gorgeous, isn't it? And up here, Alex spotted. I've lost it now. Oh, there it is. A very worn looking. Very, very knackered looking. Jack. Knuckle bone. Or alley gob. Or five stone. <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> oh, wow. So this place is heaving in treasures. Right there on the surface, another blue bead. Wow, oh, look. Isn't that beautiful? Another little turquoise blue bead. Look, we'll put it in the sun. Where's the sun? <laughs> there. Oh. oh, we've got a little buckle here by the looks of things. Look, look, so we a little round thing down here, look. Just sitting there in that little stream. And I think it's a German marble, it's a tiny one. Look how many. Oh, it's got like a, I can't remember what you call. Inside it's got lattice. Oh, I can't remember. But that's beautiful. They always are, but they're always knackered, unfortunately. Strange metal-y thing. Copper alloy? It's been screwed to something. Maybe it's like a picture hanger or something. Sure, we could probably make some use out of that, so I'll take it. Ah, uh, look. Oh, it's like a little goose. I think it's a goose. Yeah, flying goose. That's funny because there's often geese in the river behind me. <laughs> so I've just found two funny melty blobs. One's yellow and one's red. That might have been something once, but are no longer. Piece of pottery here and this O Ejectile Company Limited 1902. Was that projectile? I am going to take this and do some research. That's intriguing. The Projectile Company was founded in London in 1889 and when it was bought out in 1902 the name was changed to the Projectile Company 1902 Limited, manufacturing shells and projectiles of all classes. What's this? Oh, 
It's another sort of um, ceramic reel. That's the second thing like that I found today. I like it. It's a cod marble, sneaky one. Hiding, can't hide from me, cod marble. Okay, so I thought I'd get down on the ground close and just have a good look and it paid off because down here I spotted with my beady eye. Can you see it? It's quite difficult to see. The reason being, it is black. It's a beautiful faceted black bead. Look at that. I love it. Oh, that looks very whole. A pipe book. Funny shape. Looks like some kind of workman pipe. That's cool. Again, spot something down here. Looks like a little bottle. Is it whole? Oh, wow, look. It is whole. It's the most beautiful little penny perfume. Look at that. Not seen one like that before. It's all like zuzzy. <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, I think it's like diamond. They're diamond shaped. I'm not sure what to call it. But that's beautiful. Look, little burst slip. Still has the cork in. Glorious. Perfect for the little bottle collection, me thinks. Who can resist these lovely little perfume bottles? Made for the cheaper end of the market, they became known as penny perfumes and often came in crudely made burst lip bottles like this one. The naivety of the design with all their imperfections is what makes them so charming and a joy to collect. What do you think? Curious little ceramic find here. It's whole got two holes in it no just one just one hole it's like a loop ring but it's it's complete it's not broken off anything has it been attached to something is it some kind of stopper I don't know really it's a bit strange not seen anything like that before so if you do know what it is or have any ideas please do leave it in the comments below We often find a mystery object, and this week is no exception. What on earth is this? It looks like a handle, but it hasn't broken off anything, being a complete object in itself. The bottom edge is unglazed and there is one small hole near the bottom. We have a slight suspicion of what it might be, but we would love to hear what you think. Let us know down below in the comments. Oh, I think I've just seen a paint pan hiding down here. Yes, we're a bit crusty. Oh, actually, no, we're, we're good. There we go, a paint pan. Haven't found a whole paint pan in a little while. Oh, and a vulcanite. We just found three of these jar lids in like the same small area, look. They're all broken and I always think that there's some giant marbles. <gasps> if only. So last time, Mum found a gold sovereign. This time... <sighs> I find this, whatever it is. I'm not sure what kind of coin that is, but it's a coin. It's quite a long way from a gold sovereign. <laughs> You could look for a million years and not find a gold sovereign. That's not going to stop me going up where mum was before and looking for one though. There's a lovely little cut glass bottle here but unfortunately the top's broken. But I'm thinking, could I grind that down? Hmm, I might take it and see if I can do anything with it. Aha! I spotted something down here. A lovely, lovely bead. 
I think it might be ceramic. A lovely green bead. Here's another thing. Oh, I don't know what it is. Another big ceramic-y thing. I'll keep it. I think this is a button. It's really heavy. It might be a lead button. I think that's a lead button. Don't know how I spot this one. Look at that. Is it a bead and is it even a hole? Oh! It is! I don't know if it's a bead. Hold on, let me have a look. Okay, I think it is a bead, but it's melted and it there's no holes in it. There are no holes in it anymore. It's just melted into a little blob. Oh well. Doesn't really count as a bead anymore. It's an X bead. Just hiding under this tree. I found the most beautiful. Wow. The most beautiful piece of glass. Look at that. It's like a marble, like the German marbles. I wonder if that's German glass. Or Bohemian? I'm some kind of bohemian glass that's really beautiful you know what I'm thinking make some beads with that oh actually down here what's this just spot a bit of spongeware that's quite nice oh that would be lovely to use look at that take that as well oh wait I can spot an arm and a, or a leg at 50 paces is that what I think it is oh it is it's an arm oh my goodness I just found an arm that's brilliant it's funny it's kind of like it's on a bit of an angle like stretched outwards Oh, that's wonderful. I have no idea how I spot that. My eyes are always looking. They're never just looking at one thing. They're always on the go. Brilliant. Could this be a bead down here? All the beads seem to be melted. Oh, it looks like another melted bead. Heartbreaker. Looks like a bottle stop, and it is. Down here I can spot a bead. Can you see it? And there it is. A little white bead. Oh no. <laughs> Look what's lying down there. You can see it quite clearly ah, it's an absolutely knackered penny doll they always are it's so annoying I really would love to find a one that was whole one of this sort of size that was complete would just be amazing but they are always broken I have a whole army of broken frozen charlottes these days down here there's a bit of doll's head I think yeah there's the eyebrows <laughs> oh well we'll keep looking that would have been a lovely one as well oh yes yet another broken penny doll for the collection may they rest in pieces huge marble wow that like terracotta colour that's a beauty. So smooth. Okay, so my beady eyes have just spot a bead. That me Look, can you see it? That little green. Oh, there we go. It's a bit crusty, but it's a bead nevertheless. 
It's really quite beautiful up close, actually. It's like a mosaic effect. Oh. So many beautiful beads. Some of them have sadly been melted and chipped, but amongst them are two beautiful Art Deco so-called Peking glass beads. Peking glass was developed in China in the 17th century after the introduction of European glassmaking techniques by Jesuit missionaries from Italy. But these beads weren't made in China at all. They are early 20th century Czech glass beads which were probably made to imitate malachite. It seems that referring to them as Peking glass beads is a relatively modern terminology. Okay, I've located yet another bead. It looks like a lovely blue colour. Ooh, look at that, it's well crazed. Well, aren't we all a little bit crazed to be fair? It's a tin. What does it say? First dress dressing? Is it some sort of first aid tin? Oh, I'm going to take that and clean it up, see if I can read what it says. Okay, so this is the location in which mum found her gold sovereign. I think it was right down here somewhere. Right down here somewhere in this area. And look. Looks like someone has been digging here. So could someone have dug out the sovereign and thrown it down onto the foreshore? See what else is here now yes i am i would very much like to find a sovereign of my own <laughs> i'm not sure what the chances are of there being another one here <gasps> it was just sitting like here somewhere on right on top of this mud The likelihood of finding another one is very, very slim. You never know, there could have been a bag of them or something. A whole bag of sovereigns. <laughs> no, oh well. I think I found a leg, but one hefty leg, because look at that. Look at that bad lad. Oh, wow. Oh, that is, that is, that is a leg. Legosaurus Rex. Wow. I think that wins on the biggest leg we found. The biggest doll leg we found. Or whole one at least. That's massive. This is by far the biggest complete porcelain doll's leg we have ever found. Let's hope there's more out there with a couple of arms and a head to match. It's a bead, but it's stuck. Oh no. It's rusted on there. Oh, it came. Oh, I got it. Might be a little bit knackered, but we'll take it anyway. Beautiful plain pot lid, but it's got this beautiful, um, what's called crazing. That's what that is on the surface of it, which is just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. And I think I found some other things down here. That looks like, oh yes, it is. It's another knuckle bone. It's a green one. And what's that? Oh, it's an acorn. <laughs> huh. 
huh, just pulled this out. I saw the tip of it and I just like pulled it up out of the ground and it's a leg. Broken off some kind of figurine, I think. I thought this was the base of a bottle, but I don't think it is. It's a gigantic stopper. Look at that. I think that is actually the biggest stopper. Wow, that's huge. Something else down here and I hope it's whole. Oh, it is. It's a lens. We love lenses. They're just so beautiful. Glass is just so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, what's that green thing? Oh, I don't know. It's a lens. I think another little green lens. Oh, well, that's good. I love a lens. Brilliant. For some reason, there are so many pots and pans that are falling out of this bank side. Um, there's a lid here. Um, but this dish, look at that. No holes in it. Green enamel dish of some kind. So I think I actually might keep that. That would be really handy for using for various things, maybe animals. Looks like a little figurine down here. Oh look, it's a little like Santa. Mum found one of these before but it was broken and this one is also broken. It's a little um, Japanese Christmas cake decoration. Oh, what a shame. Maybe we'll find a whole one one day. Oh, look at this inkwell. Oh wow, it's whole. It was like a cut glass inkwell. Look at that. That's cool. It's whole as well. I reckon that is Victorian. We're in an earlier dump here, but it doesn't mean to say they were throwing their old, outdated Victorian stuff. <laughs> cool. That is such unusual pottery. Not seen any like that before. I have no idea. A little receptacle. It's got a chip out of it there, but otherwise it's it's whole, I think. And take it. The registration number dates this beautiful frosted glass pot to 1930. Could it be a Lalique? Whatever it is, we absolutely love its frosty finish. We may even restore it to be displayed again. Some beautiful tiles down here that have tumbled down from up there. Actually, there's one sticking out. I'll take that one as well. We're collecting all these old tiles, these old Victorian tiles. Look, two down here, there, and a little red one there, and one down here. There we go. I'll take those. Okay, so it might be dark, but look at this. Some what kind of little figure. Oh my, oh my goodness, what's it holding? It looks like a dog. It's holding something. It's not a gun, is it? No, it looks like a violin. It's, a, it's playing like the violin. It's a dog playing the violin. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. That's amazing. I can't see it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> see. It's too dark. It's far too dark. Is it, it a mouse? A dog? Or a dog? A mouse. It might be a mouse. It might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Wow. It turns out our wee figure is a grinning, mousy musician. 
It's a porcelain cake decoration and would have originally came as part of a set with other mice playing a different instrument. Unfortunately, he has a broken ear which will need a little TLC. Wow, what a brilliant day of treasure hunting, with so many finds to choose from this week. Which find do you think should have its place in the window of wonders? We'd like to thank everyone for liking, subscribing and commenting down below, and a special thank you to everyone who has donated towards our channel, and our wonderful patrons who support us every month. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you again next week! Bye! Bye. Okay, so we've had a really good day again on the foreshore finding treasures and it's dark and we're tired so it's time for the journey home now but Good boy, aren't you? Yeah.